I got into British television as soon as I left Bristol Uni, where I finished my studies. Was, I escaped from Hungary uh, when I was just 20, so I got into finished Bristol, where I graduated. Then I spent my time at uh, first at ATV because I couldn't work for the BBC immediately because I wasn't British. And at the time you had to be British because it was a home service. Uh, had to be like radio home service or television was home service. I was very excited doing those two productions because that's the very first time I was actually in a film studio because up to that point I was only working for television, the small screen. And I started off uh, wanting to get in onto the screen, to do something for the screen. So five years working for television, small screen. Um, and coming from a country where everything worked in five, five-year plan, that was the communist system, that everything had to be done in five years plans, the Stalinist five years plans. And as I was getting to the end of my five years plan, I kept driving William Morris, everybody mad, and he said, I want to get out now, and I want to do something for the bigger screen. It was too early, but at least, they just to shut me up, they got me a job. And that's how I got a 35 mil job, because up to that point I only worked with 16 mil. So it was terribly exciting when I entered under the big clock of the old MGM studios. And it's not to be mixed up with Elstree Studios across the road, which was the old ABC studios. Uh, some people, when you talk about Tis the Blood of Dracula, which was the feature film, that was Elstree Studios, and not the Boramwood Studios across the road, which was the MGM Studios. So the series, Journey to the Unknown, that was at the old MGM, which very soon after it's finished, and then later on became a BBC studio, much later on, and they made EastEnders there. I don't know if they still do it or not. But when I came in first time under the big clock, and first time I seen a 35 mil camera, and I was talking to the operator, Bob Kindred, with all his stories on the big films he worked on, I got so excited, I, I just can't tell you, you know, I was a, quite a young guy at the time. Uh, it, it just was wonderful. So when came new people, we all had to have all... All those episodes had an American star. And this one had Robert Reed, who had a series with E.G. Marshall uh, in American television. So I was again very, I was quite stage struck all those people. I now see from American television an American star, Robert Reed. But he was terribly excited because he's seen before doing BBC classics. And oh, and you did for the BBC. So he said, Oh, love, let's get together. So we invited him during the shoot for Sunday lunch. And he told us afterwards that he went in the previous, on Saturday we didn't shoot, he went to Portobello Market looking for a present for us. And so old antiques, he bought a large wooden crocodile, like a sort of big, very big, like a piece of wood, but it's... It's a cock, with cock now, and we still have it. And now we moved house, and we still carry it. So for almost 60 years, we have Bob Reed's present, because it's so unusual. He bought it in Portobello Market in the 60s, and we love it. And that always reminds me of new people, and my first job with a 35 mil camera. And altogether, that was a very exciting time for me. And the other one was, the girl of my dreams, um, where beside Mickey Callan, Michael Callan, who came in a very different type of American actor, he always reminded me he was a little boxer because he was like a little fighter, so different in style from English actors. So don't forget, the previous five years I only worked with English actors, British. But their style and approach 
to work. No, subsequently, the next 40 odd years working in America for years and so on, I know it's different. But then I didn't know. English actors approach it very differently. They analyze the script, characters. American actors used to work on series. They came on the set ready. They said, where do I come in? They don't talk about the characters. They don't talk about how to approach, what is the psychological relationship between A and B to C. They are ready. Where do, where do, we, where do you want me to start? Excuse me, sir. First of all, they all call me sir. Doesn't matter if I'm 20 years younger, I'm sir. In America, if you are the director, excuse me, sir. You think that is English? No, it's America. They call the director sir. In England, they call me Peter. In America, always. When the first time I went to the States, doesn't matter. Jack Palance called me sir. That's an American way of, you know, talking to the director. So Vicky Callan came home. I always felt that he, he thinks that he's in the ring. He's moved around all the time. I said, I'm not going to punch you. Can you stop for a minute? I'm talking. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. But I, I mean, so what, what do you want me to do? I thought it was very funny. I never, by then I thought, quite big name English actor. I thought, this is little guy. So Zena Walker, who played uh, Juliet for the RSC, the Roman Juliet with Lawrence Harvey, she always talk in coffee break. Said, she said, when is he going to stop? Is he going to move where we are shooting or is he only now? Because I can't actually see where he's going. So there were some very funny memories I have that working with American actors for the first time, opposite English actors, and how they react to it. But the point I'm making, they were very professional. Because when it comes to work, and we say we're ready, they are on the mark, they deliver, they have humility to take directions. So when it's work, they shut up and they do it. And they are now relating to their fellow actors and so on. But their initial approach is completely different. And I don't think it's changed a lot in the last 50 years or so. They are just different. And more and more British actors go over to America and they sort of working as a two-way traffic. And I find that they are slowly adjusting to the American way uh, when they are there. And there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong at all. But at the time in the 60s, I was new to it, surprised. And it was very good that I had this experience, personally speaking, because when I went to work to started working in LA, I wasn't that surprised then. And I'm glad I had the experience on new people and girl of my dreams. And now that is a present for Robert Reed from Portobello Road. It's a reminder, 50 years old. just seen it this morning is in the hall as I left left that for here. That little wooden oh, the cockerel. cockerel is there. It's so unusual. And he arrived in Weybridge in our house in the shopper and car from Claridge's was staying with that present. <laughs> Delightful guy.